Hi guys and welcome to Olivia's Catastrophe. I'm Olivia and today I'm here to give you a book review of The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Barter. Now, The Raven Boys is just one of those books that I've had on my bookshelf for like three years but I didn't read it. And the reason I can give you for not reading it is because of the fact that I first read Shiver by Maggie Steve Barter, which I absolutely detested. And I've got a video review of that down below and a blog review so you can just tell how much I hated it. But then I read this one for no reason whatsoever. I just spontaneously picked it up and I absolutely fell in love. What this book is about are the Raven Boys who are four boys and a girl called Blue who lives with a house of psychics who are basically her ragtag family. And these characters all come together and the main character, well one of the main characters called Gansey, is on this quest to find Glendoa who is this dead king who is supposedly still alive and if you find him will grant you one wish. So Gansey is on this quest to find Glendoa and a lot of other things happen while he's doing this because when you're messing with magic nothing ever quite goes according to plan and people have been searching for Glendora for years so he's not the only one who is looking. First of all let's get to what I loved most 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 about this book and that has to be the character cast. The characters make this book absolutely amazing. I already just said that you've got your four boys. There's Gangzi who is a genius who is rich, privileged, but he's kind of resentful of the fact that he's been so privileged in his life and he doesn't know how to fulfill his worth. He feels like he's been given so much privilege so he needs to do something with it. Then you've also got Ronan, who is another rich kid, but he also has, is someone who has a lot of anger inside of him. His father was murdered and he's just had a troublesome past which has resulted in a lot of anger and a lot of grunt strength and pain that just needs to come out in some formal way. You've got Noah who's kind of a smudgy character. He's kind of always on the sidelines and not really in the centre. And then you've also got Adam who is my bae. Adam is bae you guys. Adam is someone who's in Algonby school which is where the Raven boys go to, a prestigious school who's only in the school by scholarship. He has to work so hard to make his money. He's got a difficult home situation and he never feels quite on par with the rest of his friends because he's poor and they are not. And then you've also got Blue who's this quirky character. Although she lives with three psychics who kind of all are women and kind of act as her family, she herself is not a psychic but what she does is that she makes psychics powers louder and easier for them. So let's say somebody was doing a reading of someone's future, if Blue was in the room it'd be easier for them to see the future and do that reading. So you've got all of those characters and the bromance between the boys is just so amazing. They are absolute squad goals. They know each other inside and out. They know what makes the other person tick, when to talk to the other person or when to leave things alone and you just see with their little interactions, the way this romance is just so strong and so palpable that I just absolutely loved their characters. And then of course you've got Blue who comes to fit in with the guys and the friendships and complexities of the relationships just was so great. Even the like sisterly, what's a sisterly romance? A romance? I don't even know. Three people who look after Blue, even their friendship was just so uncanny and great. And then you've got the plot. As you're dealing with psychics here, of course there is so 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 much foreshadowing, but although there is so much foreshadowing, it is in no way a predictable book. And I think that takes a lot of writing skill, so I can admire that the author made it so unpredictable while including all of this foreshadowing in it. And the plot, the finding Glendoa and all the stuff that happens along the way, it always kept me intrigued. There were so many things happening that I was just I was in love with the plot as well. I just thought it was so realistic and so adventurous and it led to danger as well which I was very impressed with but it was kind of realistic danger. The danger that you think kids could actually get in and not the danger that you see in movies that doesn't quite seem real. The writing style was absolutely beautiful. Maggie Stifata uses these phrases that you wouldn't just expect in young adult. Like, although it's straightforward and simple and easy enough to read, every now and again she'll just pull a beautiful phrase out of the air and put it on the page. So 
The one that I always remember and I will always use in this example is when somebody, she's trying to describe what someone looks like and the description was as soft as a poem and even though that's just such a simple simile the way she said it and what she was describing it just stood out a little bit to me as pretty poetic and beautiful to just throw into a young adult novel so I appreciated that even though this is a young adult novel she still manages to write beautifully and just coin some really amazing phrases in there. There were also other things that I really appreciated in this book and the number one thing was its realistic element. This is something that could happen to any kids anywhere because even though they are on an adventure, they are hunting for Glendoa, there is magic involved and fortune telling and all this jazz. It also emphasises the fact that they go to school. They have to put down and pause their adventures because they have to attend school. They have to do their homework. Adam has to work to be able to afford living. And I thought it was so realistic, like finally a young adult book that includes the fact that they have to do homework and they have to go to school despite them going on such fun adventures. And then we get to the ending, of course I won't tell you what the ending is, but the best thing about this ending was that it was not a cliffhanger ending, it was kind of a closed and ending. Like all the events, well not all of them, but a lot of the events got tied together, tied up and finished, but it was also a cliffhanger ending because right at the end she just throws something new in that wasn't there before and you're like wow I need to read more so even though it is a cliffhanger ending it's also not a cliffhanger ending and what better ending than a balance between those two. Relevance to today was that it just shows the complexity of relationships so so well and I just really appreciated that while reading and lastly did I say that Adam was bae? That's all I really have to say about The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. Really really enjoy reading it Two days later I had to go and buy the sequel, which I am currently reading now, so if you've read The Raven Boys let me know your thoughts and opinions down below and what is something realistic, like a reality for teenagers that you want to see more in young adult, like the school thing? Leave that in the comment section down below as well. So thanks so much for watching this video, please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more and don't forget to hit that notification bell if you want to be updated every time I have a new video. I'll see you next time, goodbye!